In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can configure a profile for the EBA Inspector Expert module. As a basis, we're using the setup that we already configured in the tutorial for the EBA Inspector Expert module. There are two ways to access the setup for the profiles. One is to configure an existing profile. You can click on Configure Profiles. The other way is to add a new profile by clicking on Add Profile in the Profile selection. On the left side you can see all the existing profiles and the new profile. Here you can specify a name for your profile. In this tutorial we will take care of two of these sections. One is the calculation where all the calculation parameters can be configured. The second one is the configuration of the bands. I will not go into detail for each parameter because some of them are just for special use cases. If you need detailed information regarding the single parameters, please see the manual. Here you can select the sensor type you're using. It's possible to use a displacement velocity or acceleration sensor. Also, the input signal unit can be selected. This is important because EVA Inspector gives you the possibility to select the unit of your spectrum. In this case, you can convert your signal to velocity or displacement. But we want to stick to the acceleration, so the spectrum unit will be the same as the sensor unit. As the next parameter, you have to give in the number of lines you want to see in your FFT analysis. This number is a very important part of the FFT view. If you take a small number of lines, the resolution of your FFT will not be so good. Higher values will give you a better resolution, but longer update time. In this case, we select this value and now you can see the number of samples that will be taken into account for the FFT calculation. The factor between number of lines and number of samples is 2.56. You can also specify an overlap percentage for the frames for the FFT calculation. In our case, we want to use 90% overlap, so the update time is much faster because we only take 10% new data into account. In the calculation section, you can specify some of the typical parameters. We just suppress the DC and want to have Hanning as the window type. The next important point is the expression evaluation. Here you can specify the evaluation method you want to use for the expressions used in the bands and markers. Here we select average as method. These are all required configurations for the calculation part and now we can move on and configure the frequency bands we want to analyze. For the first band we set up a band with a center frequency of 165 Hz. We can also give in a name. With a delta frequency, we can specify the bandwidth. With a value of 10 Hz for the delta frequency, we get a bandwidth of 20 Hz. For each band, we can configure events like alarms or warnings. In our case, I set up an alarm for the RMS value of this band. The limit should be 5. We don't need a dead band or delay time. I can also give it a name. Make sure that the according checkbox is active. Now this icon indicates that an alarm is configured for this band. For better demonstration, I will set up some more bands without recording. As you can see, for band number 2 I configured a warning and for band number 3 another alarm. Now all the necessary configurations for the profile have been done and we can go back to the EBA Inspector module. As we have a look at the analog signals, we can see the three bands. In our case, we are just interested in the RMS values, so we can just deselect the other signals.
By taking a look at the digital signals, we can see that digital signals are generated for each event we have set up. Now we can apply our I.O. configuration to the server. Let's have a look how the view has changed. As we can see here, our three bands are configured. Now let's have a look at the signal tree. Beside the analog signals for each band, we also have digital signals for the alarms and warnings. To show this, I will open the RMS value for band 1 and the trend graph and also the alarm we've configured for this band. After starting the data acquisition again, we can see that our RMS value is changing. And every time it exceeds our setup threshold, we get a true value for our digital alarm signal.